Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on November 21st, 2024. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do. Starting out here, always looking at the last 48 hours of imagery on our sun, as we've had no new major solar flares to report, but large plasma filaments destabilizing and snapping off of our sun. Amazing images here at 304 angstroms. Looking at the last 48 hours incoming, you can see the plasma filament swirling around and lifting. A little bit of imagery missing there. And then it lifts again, equatorial region and snaps away. And as well, outgoing large plasma filament doing the same thing. Watch this big arc as the plasma rope dances from one spot, one sunspot region to another. Let's have a closer look at these plasma filament eruptions. There's a pretty large one on the back side as well. I'm not sure if it was from a solar flare or a plasma filament. Look at this amazing images. A little earth to scale there. But we did have a backside eruption on the sun. After all of these plasma filaments dancing around, even towards the polar regions, as documented and updated here with daily events worldwide all week, showing multi-spectrum, those big plasma filaments at play, and as well, coronal hole that is Earth-facing. 171 angstroms here, amazing way to see our sun, brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. Mixed with daily events worldwide. And thank you so much for pressing play. Right now, we are observing 10 sunspot regions. That's four new ones since yesterday. A couple of them newly formed here, having a look at the sunspot regions in motion. A little bit of data missing yesterday through the SDO. A couple hours worth, but you could see those sunspot regions moving. Current space weather conditions, we are under... S1, minor solar radiation storm impacts, minor impacts of high-frequency radio. Solar winds are coming in at 375 kilometers per second. Solar X-ray flux showing no new major solar flares except minor M-class solar flare from last night. Solar proton flux is steadily rising up into the S2 range. And that is from the most recent Plasma filament or solar flare on the back side. It did produce a large coronal mass ejection. Space Weather Prediction Center not updated yet. They might not show the backside eruption here with this Space Weather Prediction Center because we're only expecting and looking for stuff coming at Earth. ISWA Space Prediction Spiral showing a CME taking off towards Mercury as Mercury is getting ready for a retrograde the end of the month into December. So heads up as we will see an uptick in seismicity across the world. And then look at this large eruption on the back side of the sun. Huge coronal mass ejection. I'm not sure from what, if it was a solar flare or a plasma filament, but there's been multiple filaments swirling around our sun this past week. Wouldn't surprise me if it was another filament eruption. But wow, that is huge and luckily not an Earth-facing coronal mass ejection. Lasco 3, this is where we will see the most recent coronal mass ejections from the sun. Plasma filament from the southwest region right there, CME, and then northeast region. We're going to have to slow this down when this huge eruption happens. Still early in the imagery, but instantly radiated and affected. Huge plasma shots taken off from the sun with this massive backside explosion. It's been very active on the backside of the sun. We only had four sunspots up until yesterday. Now we have 10. This is all coming around. So stay tuned to daily events worldwide. Big coronal mass ejection. Solar storm in progress, showing here the highest elevated X-ray flux, highest frequency affected regions, 
and it's mostly the poles right now and mostly the south pole. Tonight's Aurora forecast versus tomorrow night's. And let's have a look at earthquakes. As we're still hovering just above 200 earthquakes, according to USGS, 4.9 earthquake here ringing off the South Sandwich Islands. As well, South American Plate, 4.2s and 4.3s from San Antonio de la Cobros, Argentina. Deep earthquake there, 212. Up into Peru, 4.3, 4.8 here in Panama. Increased seismicity here, Puerto Rico with a 4.1 being the largest. 4.3, El Papayo, Mexico. And across the United States, no new major swarms to talk about or rare earthquakes to report. Notable though, up into the Oregon, minor seismicity. Tremors seem to be very quiet through the region. Alaska, quiet today. Japan, seeing a 4.8 and a 4.6, both coastal regions. And the big Marianas Trench and as well Papua New Guinea with 5.2s. 4.6s there, Indonesia. And the Tonga region only reporting a 337-kilometer depth earthquake. 4.9 earthquake there, Iran. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes, as I said, still below average and has been for quite some time. Where are all these large earthquakes? Normally we see one at least every seven to nine days. Last being the 6.8 earthquake in Cuba. As well, 6.2 earthquake Papua New Guinea. Interesting Earthquakes building up into the Arabian plate and Indian plate. As well, that rare uh, 5.7 earthquake, Greenland Sea, very notable. But right after that 5.7, we had that large eruption at the Iceland volcano. I had warned for a larger earthquake or possible eruption. Well, the eruption happened. Let's have a look at the SO2 forecast for now. This is what it looks like for the next few days. Major players being Eastern Russia, Kamchatka, Hawaii, and Mexico. Overlooking Southeast Asia, Indonesia here. Big player again with Luatobi. Multiple eruptions all week long. Things diminishing a little bit and pressure subsiding through the African plate. No new major eruptions up into Italy or towards Greece. Sulfur dioxide emissions brought to you by our 70 active and erupting volcanoes. Now let's have a look at world weather here. We're looking at wind models brought to you by windy.com as we have another bomb cyclone here heading towards the west coast of Canada. British Columbia is going to see another strong low as that one first did not penetrate the Rocky Mountains. We've also got a huge low pressure system here affecting Ireland, the United Kingdom and Eastern Northern Europe. And another one is on its way. So definitely when our polar vortex all of a sudden gains its strength in the Northern Hemisphere for winter, things start to get pretty wild. Low pressure systems get very big and maintain their velocity and strength. And this is getting a little bit out of hand. I haven't seen anything like this before. Look at the size of these systems for the long range forecast heading into Alaska and as well the Atlantic provinces of Canada. Extreme weather events are unfolding across our planet right now. And it's set to continue over this next week. Very strong, windy events all week long. Even through the Mediterranean here with a possible Medicaid in the future. North Atlantic getting very turbulent with all the huge and strong low pressure systems. Having a look here over North American soil. Showing forecast models, showing another low pressure system heading into BC coast and then big system heading into the Atlantic provinces. 
snow scooting across eastern Canada eventually, and as well, western United States. Overlooking South America, Africa, daily evaporation rains through the regions. Watch for an interesting low here coming out of Argentina for the long range. Closer look here overlooking Europe as you've got multiple low pressure systems that will be affecting you throughout the week, bringing lots of snow to parts of northern and eastern Europe and very strong, windy, stormy conditions for Ireland and the United Kingdom. Overlooking Australia, Southeast Asia, still some twin cyclones here developing through the South Indian Ocean. One of them may be impacting India in the long range, but smashing into a high pressure ridge, diminishing stormy conditions through Northwest Territories of Australia, all through Northern regions, as they are entering into their summer months. Well, spring and then into summer. But this is why our polar vortex, this is the Northern polar vortex for winter 2024, as it is clearly very, very close to Russia. Looking at the Southern Hemisphere versus the Northern, the winds have diminished. Things have completely flip-flop for winter 2024. And if you've been watching along, you'll see a big difference. In our upper level winds. And right now, we're going to be seeing some extreme cold temperatures swirling around our planet as Russia is brewing up some nasty winter storms. Give you a quick glance here, upper level winds around the world and take a quick moment to thank you for watching. Let's have a quick look at last year at this time over the Pacific Ocean. This is what our Pacific Ocean looked like last year versus right now. Watching the wind speeds and directions as these great changes unfold before our eyes. Thank you so much for watching, staying aware and prepared with daily events. If you enjoyed the show, thumbs up. Stay aware and prepared, stay young and have fun, and get your daily due.